Hi guys, welcome to the Revive Stronger podcast. I'm your host as always, Steve Hall, and today I'm welcomed by two guests, uh, two for one here, and uh, that is Andrew Chappelle and Steph Noble, who you guys should recognize Andrew, or at least you'll recognize the name because he has been on the show twice before. Uh, You might not know Steph though, uh, but if you have been following at least maybe uh, myself or the YouTube channel, you will have seen her come up in a vlog because I posed with these guys um, many months ago last year, which was fantastic. But these guys are great. I'm very excited to talk to both of them. Um, I think they're going to provide tons of value here and we're going to let you know some things that are going on, particularly in the UK, that I think is very exciting for the natural bodybuilding scene. But I wanted to kind of start with, I guess, a bit of background behind you both to kind of introduce uh, you as individuals. So I don't know if, uh, Steph, you want to kind of start a bit about kind of your, as it were, like physique, uh, competitive background uh, and go into that. That would be really cool to hear. Yeah, sure. Well, thanks so much, first of all, Steve, for having us both on. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Uh, This is really Steph's intro because I've been on the twice before i think i did like a 40 minute monologue so you, don't, you, don't, you don't need to know about me so step take the floor so um for your listeners just to give you a brief rundown um i am a natural figure pro with both wmbf and the dfac um and i have been competing since 2013 i have three british figure titles quite proud to be able to say that one um and i am a coach and a national tour and posing coach as well an online coach for my international clients um, prolific in the bodybuilding world in terms of just my passion, enthusiasm and everything I do. So um, I'm very excited to be able to share a big event this year with Andrew and, and of course, um, the whole topic of this um, podcast, which is the WMBF UK. Um, and yeah, I, I should make the joke now that me and Andrew had a, had a bit of a debate on who was going to be the president and vice president well, of this it was there was no debate. I was like, Steph, you can be the president if you want. You can be in charge. And I gave her it multiple times. Like, you sure you don't want to be it? You sure you don't want to be it? It's like, no, no, Andrew, you'd be it. And now <laughs> now we have a we have a constant joke about that. Now, now she's VP. Um, so that's that's a little bit about me, but um certainly I'm sure a lot more will come out through through yeah. the course of this, the topics we're talking about today. Yeah, I know one of the the things about your background is how you were into, I guess it was like a dance and kind of choreography yeah. and things like that and how that plays into your posing and presentation yeah. and everything like that, which I thought was, I mean, it's just a, you, maybe, I mean, it seems unique to you at least. Um, and I've seen you yeah. pose on stage and things and Andrew and both of you come across like it's just you present your physiques in a really great way. And obviously both of you have amazing physiques as well, which helps. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I think the... Um... Coming from, I have come from a professional dance and choreography background. I did many years of professional choreography before I started, which was really the reason why I started bodybuilding, was actually coming away from professional dance, but still wanting to blend that aesthetic performance element with the physique. So kind of, it was like a light bulb moment for me, being able to still have a stage element with my performance style, um, but then being able to have the challenge and the focus of discipline through another technical form I guess which was training so um then that that naturally fell into the posing for me and I just think, think this is running up my fifth year of posing coaching now which I'm wow. I'm I can't believe I've, I've actually been doing it that long but I I love it and it's growing every year so very happy to to be able to inspire other people as well yeah she's very good at it she's certainly helped me quite a lot Steve I was okay at posing before but I think she's made me just she made me that a little bit better. He's a bit it? modest. He was very good. <laughs> <laughs> it's surprising how, well, I'm always surprised, just to talk about posing for a little bit, uh, how much of a difference posing can make. Like I've been to, uh-huh. I haven't been to tons of shows, but I've been to enough shows to be able to pick out the people who have really tried to kind yeah. of take some time to learn the poses. And I can see the people who just simply haven't, and they're kind of looking to their left and right, like, how are you hitting this? Oh, okay, that's that's how we're doing it today. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, people with amazing physiques maybe can't show it off. And people with maybe subpar physiques can really give themselves an edge with that posing. So, I yeah. mean, it's huge. It is, especially now um, that our world is so visual on media. And, and, you know, of course, we're seeing more and more physiques present themselves. That edge of being able to, to show off your physique and hide your weaknesses can actually, yeah, as you say, make or break the points on those on those scorecards. Um, 
and posing fitness as well. When you can see oh, somebody massive. on stage holding poses in a really still statuesque way with clean, crisp transitions, they stand out a mile off. You can really see it. And that's then when that kind of stage presence and drawing the attention to the competitor helps. You get more eyes on you for longer. So even if you might not be in contention for the top five, you're still displaying something that I think a lot of judges and, and a lot of people who are passionate body, about bodybuilding respect because if they see somebody really enjoying their stage time, you want to watch them. And so it's um, there's so much to be said for posing. Yeah, I could yeah. do a whole episode on this alone, but <laughs> yeah, very passionate yeah, about that side of things. It's, it's massive. If you'll indulge me, I, I will sort of liken it to a sports match and so much. All the points are scored in the last 20 minutes. Yeah. And that's when people are tired and they make mistakes. And that's when all the points are scored. So if you've got that fitness and that ability to stand statuesque mm-hmm. from the start all the way to the end, when these other people around you are blowing, they make the mistakes, that's when the judge looks up and he's making that decision in the scorecard and you, you can win and beat them. Mm-hmm. And I've beaten other bodybuilders that I never probably should have beaten. Just to be frank, because they were lazy. <laughs> I've, put, I've put the work in. That's what's come about me. Mm-hmm. I've, I've seen guys that are just much more statu- much larger statures or, or much more muscle mass that I can just pose from the start of the class to the end of it. And it, it really makes a difference. Yeah, this is something I might bring back to because I want to make sure we get to the the main subject. But I, just the f- a funny side note is I know when I posed with you both and I was like cramping within like, the first like few <laughs> minutes and like sweating like nothing else. And I was like, yeah, I, I really need to start practicing my posing. So at least that season got called off. So I didn't feel too bad about it. And I was, <laughs> I was miles ahead of the game anyway at that stage. So it was all good. I, I'll give myself a bit of credit. But um, yeah. yeah, posing, I like hopefully we have a bit of time we can come back to it. But the, sure. the I, I did want... Uh, for you, Andrew, I don't think it maybe came up when we've discussed before. I, I know on the episode uh, you went over, yeah. I mean, how many, I mean, yeah. you have a, a great competitive career. Mm-hmm. What, uh, and Steph, you might want to jump in here afterwards, but what kind of got you into natural bodybuilding, Andrew? Like what kept you as well into natural bodybuilding? Yeah, where does that passion stem from? Oh, gosh. No, I mean, it's a big question. I mean, I've done YouTube videos on this and, and things like that in the year, and I think every single time I talk about this, I probably think of something else yeah. that's, that's not come up. I mean, we're, we're complex characters, I suppose. And um, I recall years ago, I, I managed to do a, I did a sit thing with a guy called Dmitry Lobakov, who's a social scientist. And he asked the exact same question as to why you stayed in natural bodybuilding and didn't decide to go on like the juice. And that's a big topic. And afterwards I realized, gosh, you're, you're much more a complex character than you, you give yourself credit for because you've got nine or 10 different reasons as to, as to why you, you, you did that. But what got me into it? Um, I like muscles. <laughs> to, to be frank, I, I think um, I always wanted to be a professional athlete. Um, I, I was really into playing sport when I was, was much, much younger. If I'm being honest, um, I didn't have the skill to, to go on and be like a professional footballer or, or athlete um, or do something in athletics. But I was really, really good at training. Like I noticed very early age that I could train better than a lot of my peers. And I had a tolerance for it and much more so than other people. And when I started going to the gym to get better at my athletics and at my uh, my sport, I realized I actually enjoyed it more than actually doing the, the sport itself. And then when someone says to you, you should think about doing a show, you're like, okay, well, let's uh, let's give that a shot. And I, I thought like, okay, well, bodybuilding, you've got to use anabolic steroids for that. I don't really feel great about doing that because, I mean, my... The, the background is that you watch sport and you're always taught to play fair and sportsmanship and all these sort of things. But when natural bodybuilding came, I thought, well, this is something that I could do. And then it, it kind of it kind of snowballed and, and went from there. And the, the first year I was second at a British finals is what would now be a team class. And then I, I realized, okay, this is something I could be quite good at. And I, I continued to do it. And for me, being that, I mean, I'm a doctor of nutrition, so I love the applied aspect of it and the the journey of investigating how manipulating your body and playing about the nutrients and training styles and, and all this sort of stuff, like, like you do yourself, Steve, how that applies. So you become a bit of a, a human science project. And um, I guess I just kept doing it and doing it from there. And bodybuilding has been great for me. I've, it's been such an amazing personal journey to be able to sort of travel around the world, meet so many interesting people and really develop as, as an individual I mean, I got my, my first degree was in sport and exercise science, probably through my passion in bodybuilding because I was so hungry for the knowledge. And gosh, um, 15, 
16 years later of doing it. And now, now we're at the WMBF UK. And I guess this is a nice segue. I, want, I would love to give people the same opportunities that I had when I was like a young guy, 17 years old, getting into bodybuilding. And um, because it was a, really a gateway for me out of what was really a rough area that I came from, because I'm just a, a young working class guy from a, a bad area and I've managed to really move on for that. And bodybuilding was a vehicle that I used from there. So I don't know if that answers your question or, or whatever, but I, I'm passionate about it. I, I like muscles. I like the artistic <laughs> side of it. I like the science. I'm, I'm all about the bodybuilding and, and I'm yeah. so fortunate I get to do it with Seth and, uh, and do his job. <laughs> Andrew's um, saying is big muscles. <laughs> You, you, you can hear him a mile off. He screams it in the gym or wherever you are. <laughs> We're going to get t-shirts, mate. <laughs> uh, yeah. Andrew, you just needed to say, like, you wanted to get laid, so you're doing it for the <laughs> girls. <laughs> 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 that, that was part of it. it was... He's looking at the girls in the magazines. <laughs> like, the old, the old, old near magazines. Like, this is how you get a girl. <laughs> oh, man. Like, Joe, I don't know how many guys fell for that Joe Weider Flex magazine. Dave <laughs> Draper on the beach looking jacked. They thought, women that's how you get them yeah. the muscles big muscles <laughs> we were talking about dragon ball z before we came on like i mean i've always been a fan of it you those guys they inspired you didn't they they were yeah. superhuman arnold schwarzenegger was the number one box office guy when i was like 12 year old i mean you gotta look up to that yeah for sure yeah i think i i mean i personally i think a lot of people relate to the fact that i think a lot of us I don't think many people look at, I don't know, as they're a, a teenager and as they're younger mm. and they're going and they're about training and they're doing different sports. They're like, oh, I want to be like a bodybuilder or uh, compete in physique. It's more so they love that they're mm. kind of pushing themselves and working at things. So when you were saying like you weren't skilled enough to do variety of sports, I was like, yeah, it sounds like me. And you, But you're good at training and applying yourself to something and you enjoyed that. I was like, it sounds like me. So I think a lot of people will be able to relate to that that background as well um i don't know if there's anything for you steph that got you particularly kind of very interested into it in terms of just what kept me in it or, what's... or what what sparked it what made you initially get into kind of competing yeah i mean for me a, a similar to andrew have done, done many different podcasts and this kind of thing and different things pop up all the time but i've come from a re kind of the opposite almost like a really intense training background in discipline of dance so I mean I was I was dancing competitively by the age of about 13 I went to a dance boarding school I came back I went straight into um, the Scottish Ballet at the time I was really intensely training sort of five six times a week so my competitiveness has come, really stemmed from that and I think when I took a step away from professional dance and I was exploring, I need, I, I've always been physical. The gym has always been there, but not in the sense of bodybuilding style. And it wasn't really until I kind of stepped away from that and thought I need to apply this discipline somewhere else. Um, and I was just, it happened to be, and it, it kind of probably the same story as a lot of people. I was in that rough and ready kind of gym in the back of Leeds, like on a little trading estate. Oh, everyone in there was guys pretty much. <laughs> it was just they were bodybuilding and I was bodybuilding and I just started to kind of get into this atmosphere. And I had Nicole Wilkins up on the wall, who was just, you know, my absolute goal in life to get to at that point. And just that beautiful frame. And because I had an athletic build, it didn't seem like an unattainable goal. Of course, I was nowhere thinking like I'd get to where I am just now. I just thought that's a, that's a kind of a physique I really want to aspire to and train for. And I could apply my kind of hard work to that. Um, and then it was a case of just being around people. And I was really lucky I was in a, in a gym, a bodybuilding gym that recognized natural bodybuilding. And I was in Leeds and it was actually the NPA Yorkshire show, which spiked my curiosity. Um, and I, I was in that kind of circle with a few girls who were training for that show and we were chatting away. And that's how it kind of got started off for me. And I was chatting away to a couple of guys in the gym who said, that's a good place to start. You're in a natural pool of people you're a uh, female this is a bigger class and there was a couple of other girls and um Michael Phillips was just down the road running the MPA and I got to know him and a few of the other guys that were doing what was going on there and that was the start of it for me and then I was hooked on natural bodybuilding then I wanted to just go 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 with that so yeah hopefully that gives you a bit of a background no for sure I, it's actually really nice 
to hear about obviously where you are now, both pros in natural bodybuilding in, in, in several different federations, but also to hear where you came from and like you've both been in it for a long, long time. And it just shows how much experience you also have got and gathered, which kind of leads me to where we are now, where there was, I guess for you, I, I don't know how it happened, but it um, seemed like there was an opportunity uh, to kind of keep the WMBF uh, in the UK. So now we have the WMBF UK, which is a new federation. So anyone in the UK, if you don't know about it, you now do, which is super exciting. As soon as I saw it, I was like, wow, we've got now like, a good handful of like very great federations to compete in. And that means more opportunities, more shows, uh, because I think at least I always looked at the guys in like the US and I was like, man, they have so many shows. Maybe, I mean, maybe too many, uh, but that's another discussion. But now we have even more here where there's more opportunities to compete. Um, so I was very excited by it, but I don't know if you guys want to talk about kind of, yeah, what drew you to uh, do it? Because I know I, I heard you on a, a previous podcast and you were saying how you're already thinking about kind of potentially running something yourself. And I guess this was a almost a perfect opportunity for you. I, I think you, you kind of nailed it there. I mean, that's exactly what it was. I, the ambition was always, let's do a bodybuilding show. Whether it was going to happen in 2021, 2022 or 2023, it was always in the back of my mind, right? I'm going to promote a bodybuilding show at some point. I've been in and around this since 2006 at shows, judging, promoting, being backstage, um, glazing, tanning. I've done every single element of it. And I know Steph's the same. She's done every single element of it. It's been so many mm -hmm. that are, you, you can't help but get the things that go up in the back of your head thinking, well, I wonder if it went like this and if I could do a show like that or or maybe I just think like that. But yeah, it was, it was going to happen sooner or later. So when the, the opportunity arose, it's like, well, it was, it was <laughs> I guess almost, this is the time. Yeah, it was like an almost instant bit of a shock. But at the same time, like we can't lose WMBF here. Mm -hmm. It's the golden goose to get to as a natural. And yes. for, for, for us, you know, it's, having just come from taking that pro card win in 2019 and having almost like that aspiration right that's where we want to go and then suddenly we're kind of not having not potentially having that opportunity here was a bit of a shame so I mean that exactly as Andrew said it was totally natural instinct to to get on a call with Bob and Tina and discuss you know can we potentially do something here we're both WMBF pros we have a track record we've been competing with judged with obviously I'm just got a lot of um internal understanding of the drugs testing side of things um this seems like a really natural opportunity and they were really amenable to that um yeah they were super keen and we went into kind of the formal yeah. interview process for it and just you know took it step by step and filled out all of the kind of pre-criteria of, of what we would be expected to do making sure that we're going to be absolutely bang on with the rules of the federation and making sure that we uphold that prestigious understanding of what's expected as a natural at show um, and yeah now the ball is well and truly rolling which is exciting um yeah it's, it, it was very natural very natural and i think it's the, the the sense of kind of positivity we've had from messages with people just even saying so glad to see wmbf's not lost in the uk yeah that kind of sentiment has really come across in the last month or so um so it's exciting to see that people are on the wavelength that we were as well yeah i think it's i i know kind of international competitors i mean and people know the uk as having just like great competitors yeah. so i think um i don't maybe some of them were like glad that the, the uk were kind of losing the wf and make their life a bit easier potentially but it, it's great that we can kind of still hold our own in that kind of federation and everything and for me it was like you said it was kind of the golden goose it was always like i, I don't know if i'll ever go pro but i mean if i can the wmbf is where i'd love to <laughs> the opportunity is there though i mean that's like, it like you said at the start of the earlier on in the call like it was a great segue for me to go and travel the world and do stuff because remember if you do really well at this the opportunity is maybe you place top two or top three that opportunity is there that you could go and compete in a world championships and go to LA or Atlanta or, or wherever it's going to going to be, and then um, and if you get that opportunity as, as a natural bodybuilder, that's your pinnacle. Mm -hmm. You got to take that opportunity if you get the chance and just grab it because you might never ever get there get there again. So I mean, and and like you say, it's having more opportunity as a natural bodybuilder. Yeah. it's um, making sure that you've got various different 
you know, federations to go in, see how you fit, see how to improve, if you get the culture of the shows. And that's that's all what we do in our journeys, isn't it? Like you do the different shows and you figure out where you fit and where you want to kind of go with your journey. Um, and so it's, ex- it's exciting to hear as well that that's something that you're channeling for, because I'm sure there's a lot of people that are excited about still having that opportunity to get up on stage. And with the first one being this year, and then the rollout of qualifiers, of course, will be next year, which I'm sure we'll talk about. Um, but it's almost like putting putting this on the map firmly is what will be a, a really exciting event and yeah. really to go for. Um, and a few, we just want to kind of inject some fresh creativity and mm-hmm. a bit of fresh blood into it as well. And if it's possible, if we can travel and stuff, I would love to take people over to the States and, and give them the chance to to step on that WMBF world world stage. I mean, we mentioned Golden Goose a few times, but don't be fooled. The WMBF is number one. And I deliberately make that pause because they're number one guys. That's where you need to be. Mm-hmm. And yeah, yeah. I was just going to say, with this this season, I it's October is the show, right? Is it the 12th? Yeah. Am I right? In Birmingham. Halloween, Halloween yeah. Yeah, it's always Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> Didn't even. It wasn't, it wasn't deliberate. We call the show the Supernaturals, right? Before the date. Before the date, right? So, I mean, someone's going to dress up as a ghost or something, surely. <laughs> or Frank for the say. posing routine. <laughs> Maybe we should give a prize for someone who's got the best fancy dress costume. <laughs> At least we all fit in with our like crazy tans walking yeah, around exactly. like Birmingham. They just be like, "Oh, that must be a new a new one that I've not seen before." <laughs> uh, so, and then you talked about, and that's why I wanted to kind of segue to was obviously this year. I guess is going to look a bit different. I don't know if I guess the like you said there, Andrew. Maybe there is the opportunity this year to yeah. take some of the winners um, through to Worlds if if travel and things are opening up. And I know. We're quite fortunate here in the UK, things are going pretty well. Hopefully, uh, things in the US seem to go pretty well, so we'll have to see. But how will a normal year look for you? What have you kind of, because I know some people have qualifiers, other people aren't having as many, but what, what's your kind of vision for that next year? Hey, well, it's a, big, yeah. it's a big question. Yeah. I'll give you the ideal world yeah. solution. Do you want to do the ideal world so solution? So the ideal <laughs> scenario is you've got three, maybe four qualifiers which are a funnel into a British Championships. Thereafter that, once you've got your British Championships, you find out who the best people are in, in the country. And then if you, you award the, the status, which is you get to go and compete in the, the World Championships. Um, there's a pro card up for grabs in the division to recognise a professional status for the best UK-based bodybuilders in their particular discipline, their class. And that's the ideal based scenario we've got to do the economics of it though that's that's yeah. the first thing when I you mean, look at in provisional sort of wise the the idea was of course to, to split the country a south and north and scotland based qualifier so that we could you know break give yeah. people the opportunity to not travel too far um similar to of course how we're used to it just now um and and really just bring the the best we can right the way through to the finals which technically would be what we're going to be doing this year but of course with scenario it's just the the biggie this year hey pascal here i just wanted to take the moment to talk about our membership site inside you'll find a thriving forum an extensive exercise library courses presentations and research reviews all i need you to do is hit the link in the description below and sign up no it sounds very exciting and i i think that's is that different to how some of the other people across europe or the us are doing it like think by having the qualifiers and the finals, you do get, like you said, they're like, you get the best of the best, or you should do, unless people, like the people do the qualifier and they, they're like, oh, I'll call it there, but they're like the best of the best. But I mean, that's yeah. their prerogative or whatever, but that's a bit different to some of the US and some of Europe, right? They don't all have the qualifiers yeah. and then the, the kind of nationals. No, you're, you're totally correct. You're totally correct. I think um, Spain, for example, I think I've got one show. Germany, I think have always had one, but they're moving to try and do four this year but I think they're a little bit more locked down in their, their restrictions just now so yeah it's the norm is one and um, if you look at the history of bodybuilding natural bodybuilding federations in the UK and um, a lot of them started with one show for a couple of years and then they've, they've grown it from there so again it's an economics question as, as yeah. well about being able to put it all all together but that's yeah you're right that's generally the norm you've got one show and you go from there yeah I mean the nice thing about um the WMBF which 
we really want to make competitors aware mm -hmm. of as well is that we will be giving the opportunity to go across and do the European shows and yeah. vice versa to bring some of the European talent over as well so that we get a bigger pool of competitiveness. The UK um, competitors can, of course, go over as WMBF um, athletes from here. And it just, again, starts to build a bigger community for natural bodybuilders across the pond and hoping that we don't have too many restrictions of course as you mm -hmm. say as well with covid and um, we want to start to in, we just want to start to kind of promote that a little bit more because i certainly when i was competing um a few years back i didn't realize some of those opportunities were there and you know if they are and there's somebody maybe with family abroad maybe they've got play people in fam in france or spain or wherever um there there are lots of different options so yeah, that'll be exciting to kind of put on the map a little bit more next year as well. Yeah, I, I think previously it was a bit more restricted that you had to compete in the UK if you're UK based. But if someone wants to go and compete in Spain or mm -hmm. Italy or something like that, I mean, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Go go do it. Why not? Do a circuit if you want to. I'm okay with it. <laughs> no, that's what I like. I liked uh, I mean, I, I imagine people, not just myself, were thinking about this already when we didn't have the UK representation where we're like kind of looking at, oh, there's one in France, Italy, like yeah. they're now not that hard to get to by plane. Uh, yeah, well, a bit harder at the moment, but typically yeah. not all that difficult. So yeah, that's, it's cool to know that that's something that you want, want to kind of promote more and make more obvious because I think, I mean, the more, I guess that's something that is challenging as a promoter is getting your name out there and being present. Uh, and uh, I guess to grow natural bodybuilding that's what you're going to need i don't know if you already have ideas of what you're planning because i know you said you're going to bring your own flair there but i don't know if there's anything you've already got you're kind of thinking about oh this is how we're going to make the WMBF bigger in the uk well we've, we've got a, we've got a number of things and um, i mean for, for the bodybuilding geeks amongst us out there I, we, we always we all want to put our own flavor on it and our own sort of stamp on it and we're we're thinking about playing about with the sort of the way in which the show runs in terms of the, the formatting of the, the pre-judging in the evening show and maybe doing it a little bit different. But I, I just want to put the teaser out there to say that that's because we've got to work at the kinks of that right. first. We have, we have a really interesting idea for a format, which we think would give the competitor a really interesting dynamic experience of two different types of show, if you like. Um, we're, as Anna says, we're playing around with some ideas and we're going actually down to the venue um, in July to go and do a walk around of how this could all pan out. Um, but yeah, we do want to bring something a little bit different and a little bit um, unique to the circuit so that everyone is experiencing the different shows and they've got something to look forward to at different shows as well. Um, so that's definitely one thing. Yeah, I mean, to, just to give you a little bit more on that. I mean, in its essence, one thing I hate about shows is when you get people walk out, one quarter set of quarter turns, muscular and then they're off stage and don't get a chance yeah and, and the, the idea we're thinking about we give people more opportunity to get judged so we can come all the way back to that last bit that we we're saying right or rather that bit we we're saying right at the start which is if you've got to stand and pose and actually learn your craft you've got more opportunity to actually get that sporting element of it so that it would be about giving the, the athletes more time on stage mm -hmm. essentially from uh, from there and um, another thing I, I want to put a new round in yeah for bodybuilding we're quite excited yeah, about to, and Mr. Golden Era. I mean, I love posing, right? Steph loves posing. I like the artistic nature of it. I grew up watching the guys like Arnold Schwarzenegger, etc. There's no doubt in my mind, and I'm sure you probably agree, that the most popular class probably, or at least is getting there, is, is your classic physique friend. Yeah. Chris Bumstead must be the number one most popular bodybuilder in the world right now. Um, so I would love to put a bolt on just to the bodybuilding, symmetry, muscularity, round three, or round four rather after the three posing, which is just let's see your classic poses and actually do them and we'll score it. And yeah, and the whole, so the whole idea of that. More, kind of, more judging. Yeah, more judging and bringing an element, there's a kind of a through line with sort of the ideas we're having, which is bringing an element of traditional, aesthetic, beautiful bodybuilding, you know, really amazing understanding of how the, the form is presented and using things like the golden year around is something we hope that bodybuilders will kind of get into and get a bit more of a flavor and have some fun with so that they experience more time on stage in a creative way as well so um that's certainly something we're, we're looking to to put into the bodybuilding classes yeah for sure so we've got to work out 
how it's judged and the, the nuance of it and, and everything like that. You, you leave that to us, but I think it'll be different because it's, there's nothing like that on the, the circuit just now. No, I know a, a lot. Well, first of all, I love the idea of having more time on stage just because yeah. like, I know I've been there when you've dieted for however many weeks, like the 30 weeks is pretty common for a lot of people. And then you step on stage, just like, you're lucky if you get 30 minutes. So mm. sometimes that can be, and especially if it's, I don't know, your only show, for God forbid, then yeah. you're like, oh man, I've just done all that for that. So I think more time on stage sounds really, really good to me and then i think a lot of people try and tie in those classic poses into like yeah. their bodybuilding routine anyway yeah. in, in the end so it's quite nice that they actually get the opportunity to nail them down and potentially be judged on those as well which and i think i mean like you said chris bumstead and classic like bodybuilding is growing at such a rate i don't i don't know if you guys think it's like something that would ever come into natural bodybuilding particularly but for me at least i, I always view it kind of like for me it didn't make a, a ton of sense just from the the fact that kind of natural bodybuilders we're never going to get to the, the freakish size of what the enhanced guys are so we're already like if you look good as a classic you're going to look good as a bodybuilder but I don't know. yeah steve I'm, I'm, you're singing to the choir on that on last you, point yeah, yeah. We're, 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 that, we're in yeah. total agreement i mean no need for a new class let's just do those bodies yes well. <laughs> have our own sort of flavor to it but you know it's cl classical bodybuilding in my opinion bodybuilding done well good symmetry good proportions that's classical bodybuilding yeah and that's, you know, that's, yeah, bodybuilding. that's it it's bodybuilding um and so you know we're, we're looking to really keep it keep it simple and remember you know what this is about so and of course with the criterion rules with WMBF, there are things we can do and we can add in a, a lot of our own flavor but we do need to consider you know what the points on the scorecards are going to and where we're taking these athletes as well which is over to the WMBF, yeah. and they have their own set of of course uh, divisions and classes and um, classic bodybuilding of course isn't at the WMBF and I don't foresee that being no, an option neither. for them um, no. anytime soon so it's again yeah it's, it's giving it's giving bodybuilders more of a chance to to get creative and get back to the roots of bodybuilding without actually calling it like a classic class classic physique class or a classic yeah. class yeah yeah for, for sure I can see the appeal probably in terms of like getting the money in the, like the economics i guess yeah. because of like it's people like classics they're like oh, i'm going to enter that so um i can see the draw there completely but like uh, yeah like you said if you can draw it into your own bodybuilding there anyway kind of you've got the best of both worlds hopefully people will be drawn to that like you have your golden era classic kind of uh, round which sounds really cool actually um i know you talked about going pro previously could one of you just kind of describe for a UK athlete, what's their kind of route to going pro with the WMBF just from like an amateur trying to climb the ranks? What, what would it look like for them? Okay, so next year, the ideal scenario would be qualifying situation. So you qualify for the, the British Championship. So you'd be the best athlete in your region or you, you make it into the, the top three or whatever it, it happens to be on that day to get elected to to go to the, the UK based championships. There after that, you stand up against the, the best of the best athletes in the, the UK in your particular class. Um, if you're successful in that, you then go into the overall championship for your division. So if it's the, uh, the men's bodybuilding, you've got one opportunity there to, to win a potential pro card. Should you be fortunate enough to, to win that, then, then you become a, a, pro, a pro bodybuilder. Now, I made that sound really easy. <laughs> yeah, that, that ain't easy. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you. I think, when was it? Gosh, I think I was in like nine overalls before I won one. <laughs> so, <laughs> and like seven, seven years of, um, oh, seven years of, of bodybuilding or, or something like that. So, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's one particular route. Once you win the pro card, after that, you're, you're then a pro and you can go and compete in pro events internationally wherever they be held so if there's a pro show in the uk then you can compete in program b or the swiss championships that's always where the european championship is or if italy happen to do one either there's grand prix circuit you can go over to states and there's a pro circuit over there at these various different american uh, shows but then you can also compete at the, the world championships as as, as well with the, the wmbf from there so that's that's one particular route once you get through there the other way as you um you do well enough in your class, you make it into the the overall standing, 
maybe you don't win the, the pro, but you qualify to go over to the, the world championships. Now, for me, if an athlete's good enough and I and they finish second place in their class and say maybe the lightweight class or something like that, um, I, I wouldn't have any bones about inviting them as well to come over and do represent the UK in the, in the world championship from there. Because there's there's an amateur show in the US and depending on the, the class and the rules for that particular year, they do what are called super pro qualifiers. And it's usually if there's a minimum of eight people in a class as an amateur at the world championships, then the winner of the class gets the uh, gets given a pro card as well. So okay. that, that's how it would work there. So that's your, yeah, so your avenue. The ideal scenario is having a, a great amateur team and a good pro team. Yeah. And we take that whole UK uh, team out and compete in the various different classes to represent the UK. And going back to what you said at the beginning, Steve, you know, the talent, there's so much talent yeah. in the UK. There's so much. Um, and I'd just really liked, I know we've spoken about this, but we'd really like to see more people have more opportunity um, to get abroad and to, to get a, a flavor of kind of what what's available to them as, as um, athletes and really grow the sport a bit more. So for us, um, yeah, we're looking to see people really bring it um, and and fight it out for for those those spots, plane tickets over to potentially Las Vegas and Miami and New York and all these places that we get to to go to as a team, which we're very much looking forward to, and we will be hoping to give some good offers to people when we get to that that spot as well in terms of being able to get out there. Awesome. No, that sounds very exciting. And like Andrew, you said, like it sounds easy on paper, uh, but in practice, (laughs) achieving something like that is is very hard. But I think, I mean, I don't know if you'd say different, but I imagine you'd say you wouldn't want it any other way. Like it proves like professional status. uh, That's something, I mean, not many people get to be for a reason. I've, I've seen guys, Steve, who have been given pro status and they've not been ready for it. And then when they've gone, they've gone at the pro scene, they, they've just been eaten alive. And they would be better off staying an amateur for maybe a few more years after that. And then having more opportunities to compete, having more fun with it and everything like that. And it would have been more fun for them. Um, but because they got that card maybe too early or they got it easily or, or whatever. Um, yeah, it's, um, it's really important that you, it's a difficult path to, to get that thing so that they can be competitive when they, they get there. So, yeah, I wouldn't have it any other way, as, as you say. It's, a, it's an interesting one because, of course, we see, because of the nature of bodybuilding, we've obviously got natural bodybuilding and, and open defense, yeah, sure. et cetera. You see a lot more pro cards given out in the open side of the sport, which confuses people because when they come over, to, like when you're in the natural side of the sport, you know, it could take up to, well, for me, it was five, what, five years before I turned pro. Mm. Um, and, and obviously I, I think for other people, it could be longer. You're, or, you're, looking at probably about seven or eight years old. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not an easy it's not an easy feat, and that's why it means so much to you when you finally get there. It's yeah. it's just that utter hard work for the years uh-huh. that you focused on it. And then I think that's what's really amazing about the WMBF Pro Card as well, is we've been over, we've seen the caliber. You, it yeah, blows your really mind when you go yeah. over to America and things. Of course, they've got a lot. It's much bigger over there, and you do you do you forget how many shows they've got and how much opportunity, and you kind of wonder where have these guys come from. There's just so much more opportunity over there. But when you're standing up next to them or you see them, it brings the kind of element of why you work so hard to get that and you earn your right to stand up there. Is yeah, it's pretty special. So we're looking forward to continuing that road for for us guys here. I, I wonder if you say though, I mean, it's not all about the pro card though, because like, yeah, that's true. Because most, uh, let's just be frank, just the numbers on it, most people are not going to win the pro card. They're going to, they, you want them to have a really great experience on this, the stage, feel valued, get some fantastic photographs. We've got Fivos photography. Yeah, name drop there. Yeah. We have Fivos. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, I like, I like so Fivos. He's great. A, a so great time, that. good time on stage, feel like they've had a just go, enjoy it, and then come back and do it again and again. So it's, it's not just about the, the person up here yeah it's 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 about everyone on the, on the journey yeah and that's obviously exactly why we're i know we're not explaining the full format idea now but we want people to come to that show and feel like they've had loads of time on stage that they've been properly looked at in not just the muscularity round but in the symmetry round doing the quarter turns first get them out do their muscularity rounds or of course the other divisions if you're in the female divisions really spend time on looking at the overall posing of the different shots etc 
um, and, and just give them something they can go away and, and go, that was a really good day. Regardless of the outcome, that mm. show was something really fun and special and a really good culture. That's vital, is the culture that we're trying to, to promote. Um, so, yeah, I completely agree with, with Andrew. The pool card is, of course, something we all want to aspire to, but having that day meet your expectations when you've done all the hard work, like you said, for potentially... 40 plus weeks or whatever if you're as crazy as we are <laughs> um to get there and actually go it was worth it is is what we want yeah I, I love that and I love I, I was worried I'd drawn too far into the the pro talking about the pro cards because you're right uh, most people won't and uh yeah. I imagine uh the shows are really built off the amateurs and the people who are just yeah. turning up and turning like they might come they might not place in the top three and this this these are the people you need to compete uh because they drive the numbers up like you said the economics like you, you need them uh and I, i've been that person and yeah i mean i talking from experience i definitely going to a show and feeling like you've been seen you've been heard you've kind of it's been an enjoyable experience that that can make it for you uh and yeah. this is the thing isn't it i mean you feel like you've been, had a good fair whack and you'll accept the result and the outcome much more so than if you feel you just got kind of passed by a little bit i guess like also the shows are a place not just for people to compete but they're a place to actually finally meet and yeah. Yeah. get your fellow, muscle with your fellow people and i mean i i know firsthand I, some of my closest friends are from those shows you know like meeting people backstage sharing the whole experience doing the fun shots backstage with you know like just whatever they're doing at the time flex shot pump up shots all that kind of stuff like having fun yeah. you've got to remember this is about having fun as well you can get really really serious about it. bodybuilding should be that celebration of just the hard work that we've all done to get there yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we, we're certainly aware of, of that. And I think we, we've often talk, talked about this, like why are we doing the WMBF UK? And Angie and I come from both this side, being the competitor up on the stage and, and from the judging side, thinking about all the things that we would pull on from the shows that we've been to, to make this a, a really great event. So hopefully we're going to try and, and get the balance right for both the people coming to watch, the people involved, but also, of course, the number one being the actual athlete on stage having that awesome time so yeah hi guys steve here just wanted to take a moment of your time to remind you of our online coaching service at revive stronger we pride ourselves on providing personalized service that will take your physique and knowledge to the next level if you're interested check the description and sign up uh, i love that uh, and i think i mean yeah that, that you guys mentioned you said fun many a time as you were talking there and i was just like that i mean whilst i think we can all agree the, the whole process is not going to be fun. There's hard parts. I mean, it has to be, but ultimately yeah. that show day is the, the thing that's meant to be the most enjoyable part of it. You don't want it. You're not like kind of counting down the, the kind of minutes until you're on stage yeah. and then off stage, you can just go off and eat the meal. That's the fun part for someone. You want it to be the stage. So uh, I love that. And you mentioned uh, kind of judging there. And also, I guess mm -hmm. we should talk about drug testing. Those would be two, I think, interesting topics to kind of talk about. Um, how, how are like... I actually heard Andrew saying, and I know you, you're kind of both looking to get more females on the judging panel as well, because, um, oh well, I mean, a lot of the categories are completely female. <laughs> you have to. You, yeah. You, have to. you, need, the balance, like, you yeah. need to move for the times. I mean, we're not, it's not the 1970s anymore. I mean, <laughs> so you, you need more, um, you need more female judges on the panel. You, you just do. Yeah, we'll, we'll be having, of course, um, we'll have the bikini class, the um, fit body figure, master's figure. Um, women's bodybuilding so you know half of, half the show is going to be the, the ladies there and we need to have that balance across the judging table um of male and female uh judges so that we can really have a coherent well a variety of set of eyes but a coherent understanding of what's expected so there's a good a good balance there and I think as well from a feedback point of view it's good to have females in the sport speaking to other females about why they place where they place because we speak in maybe slightly different ways about that um so yeah i think it's going to be really vital for us i think a good pool of around to seven to nine judges we're looking for with a relatively equal split so we're currently in conversations with quite a few people which we'll we'll talk about um as soon as we have the, the confirmed judges um and yeah i think i think it'll be nice for more females to be involved in that side of the sport 
as well because I, I certainly know that having had the years that I've, I've been competing and in, invested in obviously the posing for many federations and I sit in the I sit and do all my own judging you know check that I'm kind of on point and know that who's going to place where etc I think there's a lot more females that want to have that opportunity as well so and they, they yeah. should get that opportunity they, mm. they definitely should um yeah so I, I don't think I've got anything else to say on that it's just that that needs to happen and I think you guys, with your judging, you have like a, a course that the judges have to like go through. Yeah, so they, that, they have, right. yeah. So that, How that's does that look? Well, I think we, we need to get our judges obviously in place. And yeah. We've got people that we're going to have, but we need to make sure that everyone's on the same page yeah. with, with the criteria. Now, the WMBF has got a coefficient, so you need to be within about 10% of the, um, the actual... Well, of each other in terms of the judges. So if you're scoring about, if you only get it similar to the other judges, about 65 or 75% of the time, well, yeah, everyone's got their own winner and their own ideal of the perfect physique, but there's still a criteria here that we're trying to adhere to. So everyone needs to get up to that standard of at least 90% of the time they're, they're picking the, the person which is in correspondence with our person. So um, we'll, we're going to do workshops on this to get people Some up to speed, training. to yeah. refresh people and... Um, because I mean, I've I've been on panels, and to be honest, with Steve, like some people, I can tell they just don't care about some classes and so on. And you you need to be invested in it as a judge to make sure you, you get it right. And yeah, so we we're, we need to have our workshops to and train people to make sure everyone's up to speed on this. Yeah, it's going to be pretty pretty important because you do need a coherent understanding across the board on that panel on that table of what they're looking for um because otherwise things can get lost and we don't want there to be any reason for anyone to place in the wrong place so everyone's got to be i mean things happen <laughs> things happen <laughs> they do sometimes you just get a bad result but um you, you should be trying to do these workshops and, and get everyone sort of trained to a level whereby they get less and less just like the referee makes the wrong decision sometimes that's yeah. just yeah that's no, really cool to get that insight behind the judging because i think a lot of us go to these shows and they're not exactly sure will the kind of the criteria mm -hmm. i don't know if you have it on the website now but is that something that you're looking to kind of have on the website so people are like oh that's kind of what i'm looking for because i think some people i don't know if they even look for that or <laughs> they just go yeah. with what they in their head they're like oh that person won i'll just aim for like that look but do you yeah. have like yes. that sort of so this is yeah. huge for us that's so getting because it's so it is so confusing looking at kind of you should mention the website by the way. Yeah, yeah. That yet. Well, website wise, at the moment, the website up, um, that people can see is is a base template. Um, the actual live website will be going up next week, which we'll announce, of course, on the Instagram page. Um, but the criteria and what's expected in the criteria is going to be very carefully outlined for each of the of of, of course the divisions. But we're going to actually put videos which we're currently filming up of exactly. We've got models showing you exactly what we want in the criteria, taking you through the actual court turns and muscularity rounds so that you have a video clearly stipulated that's never going to go away, that's very, you know, will change if, if the criteria change, of course, but um, so that you're not running around trying to find past winners or trying to find, you know, things that you're not, maybe a grainy photo here or there or whatever else. It's just going to be very clear, very clear, and very, very outlined, laid there. So, um, ah, yeah, WM Andrew's just put a note here for me. WMBFUK.com is going to be the website that will be launched to first we'll announce this. But at the moment, if you want to go and look at the exact classes that will be available, criteria is still to be fleshed out. WMBFUK.co.uk is the template just now. Um, but all the actual classes, the divisions are there as they will be. But the actual fleshing out the criteria will go up next week. But plus you can reference the WNBF, World Natural Bodybuilding Federation, over in the States. All the criteria is, is laid out on, on, their, as yeah. well on their website. There will be some retweaks and things like, of course, um, we have got our own um, thought processes on posing attire. So trunks, bikinis, things like that will be really clearly outlined. And then, of course, things like the gold mirror around will be additional. So there, one, as soon as it's out, you'll know what we'll be telling you. So, yeah that's awesome and i think by the time this comes out the the template maybe will no longer be a thing and you will just have the the main yeah, website i was, I was gonna say Fingers probably, crossed, Steve. you can <laughs> probably 
free go to WNBFUK.com now. I'll have, I'll have both of those linked below just so people, or, or, or if I know uh, by then, we'll just have the, the one that's live. Uh, that awesome. Hopefully the, the, the non-template is available then. But that, that sounds great. And having the videos there, just making it super clear for people, just so there's no ifs, buts, or whats, just so people know exactly what you're looking for as, as a judging panel are looking for. So they feel like they can, that's something to kind of target with the look, how lean they're getting, all those yeah. sort of factors. That's it. And then it's just leveling up where competitors can go and, and know exactly what they're doing. And I think, you know, now more than any time before, having instant access to the website, to the socials, to, you know, we really want to make sure people can get the information quickly, know what they're doing and, you know, not be confused. I mean, the worst thing is being a first time or somebody, you know, really early on in, in this whole journey and wanting to ask questions but not really sure if they should ask questions um, and I, I kind of want to say from the offset questions are really important but we're going to try our best to provide all answers to those questions on and we've gone through a list of them of what we've had through our journeys and we've asked people already you know what do you want to understand about what's expected so from top to bottom we're hoping to have really clear criteria clear videos showing you the posing as well, knowing what to expect. We will be running posing workshops throughout the year as well for WMBF um, this year and next year. Um, so just creating more community around it so it's something to look forward to. Yeah, yeah. All, the first protocol for anyone should be on the website. Have a look on there. Your answers to your questions should be on there. Yeah. And then if you're really struggling, then, then you contact someone. Because then we'll need to update the website and make sure your question's on there. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Awesome. I know for me, uh, when I competed for the first time, I hadn't shaved under my armpits, uh, oh. which I always find just hilarious. And I got judged down for it. And I don't even know if that was stipulated anywhere. Maybe it was. Um, I, I don't remember actually seeing that anywhere, like in terms of like what hair should or shouldn't be present. Yeah. Um, okay. To me, it, it wasn't super obvious, but to them, they're, yeah, it's an I, embarrassing I, moment. I can give you a story on that. Um, oh God. Franco yeah. Colombo, apparently, I, I don't know how true this is. I was reading Muscle Mag International's Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding. Ah. <laughs> I actually nice. have it in hand. <laughs> this book's great, by the way. You guys. should Check see it. It's really good. You really good. See it. Anyway, <laughs> it alleges the different methods of preparing your body, and Franco Palumbo doesn't like didn't like shaving, apparently, or waxing. He would just rip it out with his bare hands. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. <laughs> I hope he kind of did. I mean, you yeah. see him blowing up that water balloon and pumping iron. So maybe he did. I'm going to go with that's maybe a false. Story. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's what he He's did. got his tweezers just individually, yeah. each one. <laughs> you left your um, and pumping iron. You probably did. On, on them, skin preparation and things like that, that's a really, really valid point. And things like that crop up all the time. People don't realize. So, you know, that that is all really relevant stuff that's going to be up there. Um. At, the sh at our shows, we're going to be keeping things really clear for the athlete. So we will have all our in-house tanning services. We'll have um, the skin, uh, the skin, the, the hair and makeup services. We've got a professional hair and makeup team ready to go, um, who I trust with my life. Yeah, they, they did all our girls. Phenomenal, the years, they really phenomenal uh, team of, of ladies that really know how to get the makeup and hair right for the stage. I'm very excited about being able to offer that. Um, and just really having this as a as a clear route to the show, knowing where to go, what to do, everything smoothly and um, done for you. And yeah, just, just again, having everything sorted so you're not worrying about anything. Yeah, oh, I love that because I know uh, from personal experience, like having the professional tanners at like the show is always just a lifesaver. Like I oh, hate yeah, having to yeah. mess around with anything else especially as a first time competitor, like you say, yeah. like just remove those stresses from things. There's enough to think about. Um, and then, yeah, something I wanted to talk about, probably this might be the last thing we touch on, I guess, mm -hmm. will be kind of the drug testing. Um, sure. I think a lot of people just hear natural bodybuilding and they don't really know what to expect when they get to a stage or to a show. Um, what is that going to look like for you guys? Okay. I mean, that, this is really the most important part of natural bodybuilding because without the drug yeah. testing, you don't have a natural bodybuilding show. Yeah. You, you just don't. And unfortunately, I've been to shows down the years of where I've competed, taken part. It's called itself a natural bodybuilding show and there's been no drug testing. So you sort of think, well, what was the point of, of all, all of that? And 
So, I mean, drug testing, how, what were, the, when we spoke to Bob and Tina, one of the reasons they were so pleased and keen to get us on board is because we really resonated with them, the fact that we were speaking and we said, no, drug testing is so important. Yes, and that was really, they, they knew that we valued that. They really valued that. So I think that was one of the big clinches for us that the drug testing was going to be really put on a pedestal in that, in that respect. So, I mean, actually, we, we really should be speaking about it first right from the start, but it just had to happen to be right in here. But the polygraphing is something that we're in talks with people just now to try and get that arranged. So if you've never had a polygraph test before, it can be a little bit daunting, but it's one of those things that has been gone on in natural bodybuilding for, well, since its inception, back in the, the, the late 80s, early 90s. And there's a lie detector test. You go and sit down with a polygrapher to, to ensure your natural status. And then at the show itself, you've got a combination of random drug testing on competitors and class winning drug testing as well. Yeah, and just for people who don't understand the difference, drug testing is urine samples. So that is, you know, we are going to be doing that. And then the polygraph is separate to that. So that people understand. Sometimes people can get confused when you say drug testing, you're not quite sure you know, what it means. Um, and that is really just taking your urine sample, you fill out some, some clear documentation, and then that gets sent away to make sure that everything's got board. Yeah, so, so that's how it works. And I would love, if I can manage the coordination and the logistics of it, is getting in place some sort of biological passport program. That might be too ambitious. I, I don't know. It would require a lot of coordination with a lot of people and a big investment, yeah. but just taking people throughout the year randomly and saying, okay, I'm going to do five, five tests on you and we're going to follow you along the line. And if people are familiar with the sort of testing you're doing cycling, it'd be similar mm -hmm. to that. And if you move out with the ranges once we've tested you, unfortunately, then you're, you're out, of the, mm -hmm. you're out of the show. And um, so that would be something we want to do uh, along with random testing. Mm -hmm. And as with all natural bodybuilding organizations, there's going to be a, a TUE system. So that's a therapeutic use exemption system because we're not in the habit of trying to, you're not trying to catch people out, but you've got to make it fair for everyone in just the same way that therapeutic use exemptions have to be have to be done. But yeah, the, the drug testing is a, a big thing and uh, the samples will go out to University of um, California. Yeah, yeah, that's such oh, right. Wow. <laughs> Home of Home of oh, right. Got you. That makes sense. Um, yeah. So with the, the testing, is that, can everyone expect to get one of the two or is it just certain people are going to get the polygraph and the, the kind of the urine testing so wmdf rules are that everyone should get a polygraph test mm -hmm. that's the criteria so if you're not doing that criteria then you weren't following you're not doing wmdf rules and um, if you're not going to do w everyone gets a polygraph test then you're talking 30 percent of the athletes need to be drug tested have to be drug tested yet so that okay. that's the that's how stringent that we're, we're talking here now if you're doing polygraph testing and um ideal scenario everyone gets polygraph tested and you and you drug test at the the same time from from there so it's a combination of the two takes place um the bmdf for example do do it in a very similar way yeah right. um, at, the, at their british finals at the polygraphing at least they don't always do them at the, the regional shows because yeah. the logistics of it is the challenge but we, we want it, the, the goal is to try and deter people who are genuinely trying to cheat the system and so that we can keep the sport clean for all for natural bodybuilders and in my experience you're probably 99.9 percent .9 of people are are clean and they're not trying to cheat yeah. or anything like that but there's always some bastard <laughs> <laughs> there is <laughs> But I mean, I think people always get quite nervous thinking about the polygraphs and the drug tests. It's part of the sport. Yeah. yeah. And, once you, and literally, what, it's just part of it. It's part of what we do. Mm -hmm. And once you've done your first season and you've experienced that, you get it. And you're yeah. like, right, that's what's expected of me now ongoing. And if you decide that that's not for you, then you go off and do whatever else you want to do. But this, you know, we, we're passionate about natural sport, natural bodybuilding. Yeah. Um, so this is not an abnormally this is something that's totally normal expected and we we want actually to um welcome it as something to celebrate because yeah. it's a it's yeah. good for the sport it's really good yeah. for the sport yes. um and it should be visible as well it should be super visible you should know where you're going you know all these things are are, are really important so that people feel again that it's very fair clear everyone's on the same playing you know level playing field um and then all of the other bits and pieces in terms of 
out of season drug testing and things like that. We'll make that clear so people can have a set of expectations so it's never like what the hell's going on kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, um, we're writing the rules <laughs> just and, to speak. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's it's something that should be celebrated and not people shouldn't worry about that. It's something that's important for natural bodybuilding. Yeah, I should you explain how it works. So, if you're selected for a drug testing at a, at a show, what happens is you get a chaperone. So the person will say, um, "Hi, Joe Blogs. Congratulations on the class. Yeah, and um, you've done fantastic. But unfortunately, as part of this, I have to do the drug test on you. Please don't leave the backstage area and just let me know when you need to pee." <laughs> we'll, we'll or they'll be putting water in your hands yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, typically you're dehydrated anyway and then you, you go away you, you do your drug test as Steph says you, you pee in a cup you pour the cup into your samples and you fill the paperwork in associated with it as you mentioned you're the only one that handles all this stuff the, the, the other person just the chaperone observing it yeah. with you they'll help you with the paperwork how it fills in and then it all gets signed sealed and then gets shipped off that's, that's how it works yeah and from a polygraph point of view as well it's a set of questions that they'll be obviously taking you through and um, we're currently in we're talking with a specific kind of testing aren't we at the moment yeah. which will make more clear um but it's if anybody who has done a polygraph before with say the bmbf it will be almost identical yeah. to that process so um you can expect you know a calm environment where you're just asked um a set of control questions and then a set of questions that of course we need to adhere to and then that's it that's it then you're free to do the show yeah, yeah, pretty much. Very Obviously, clear. if it all goes well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I've, nev- doesn't go well. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had uh, the kind of urine test before, but I have had one polygraph before. Um, How did you and find it? oh my gosh, I was like, I was a wreck. I swear, my physique just took like a twenty percent downturn after that experience. <laughs> no, it's so normal though, because I mean, even if I'll talk about my first experience of it, I find it the most nerve wracking thing as well. But it's just, normal nerves are taken into account you know that's that's totally taken into account and it, it is a nervous thing it's just the way it's set up isn't it and it's designed like that as well though because you've got to have a set of well it's going to help determine the outcome I suppose but yeah. the, the polygraphers are aware of that natural nerves come into the equation and if you're particularly nervous you can talk to the polygrapher about that before you start and these sorts of things can be can be talked about so yeah, and then of course you could follow through with the questions. And um, what's the, the what happens if somebody needs to reset it again? I mean, in my experience, when I've been a drug control officer before, um, sometimes people don't do particularly well in certain questions because I mean they're they've not understood the question correctly or they've got just a little bit kerfuffled in their head or something like that. So sometimes it's just a case of clarifying what the issue is that they use a pre workout supplement and. 2004 and they're still concerned about it then and you have to say to them like look that's not actually an issue and then they, they go and do it again and sell they sell for it as, as i said before the whole point of the drug testing are in the, the polygraphing it's not to catch out anyone that's genuinely an actual competitor that you're, you're trying to be reasonable and everyone should get the, the opportunity to take part if they're natural it's the ones that aren't natural and that are cheating they're they're the ones that should be concerned yeah. yeah, I know. It, funnily enough for me, it was with the MPA I had mine and mm-hmm. I, I failed it for the first time because mm-hmm. one of the questions, as you guys know my backstory, yeah. it was basically, have you ever taken a banned substance that's improved your performance or something? And I was like, I told you because we had a chat before and I was like, yeah. you know I have. So I was like, yeah, um, because of, if the listeners yeah. don't know my backstory with the, kind of my head injury and everything. And so I ran it again. Um, and it ended up, it was like an hour process in the end. So I think that partly made, we ran it again. He asked it in a different way, yeah. which meant it was like made it passable because it was, mm-hmm. like you said, through the medical kind of use exemption. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's I think- That's a good example, yeah. That's a yeah. great example though, because that's exactly the kind of thing that people get worried about. You know, they might be thinking about something that's totally okay, but they've just got themselves in a stress about it. So um, yeah, I think it's it's one of these kinds of things that people- no, it's you have to do it and you've got to yeah you've got to get through it you've got to do it um but not to be too just to try and have a few deep breaths before you go in and just just sit and just be as frank and honest as you as you would be yeah from what i remember was there something about alcohol consumption and it because i think i was asked something about like how much 
if, if I'd consume any alcohol in a certain number of hours. I don't know if there is, um, but I just because I know some people have like wine before stage or something yeah, and people do yeah. these wacky things for their peaking. Uh, I don't know if that is part of it or if I've made that up. Um, no, I can imagine because like, there's a lot of parameters involved in, I mean, we're now getting into the nitty gritty of a, of a polygraph test, but you're measuring your blood pressure, you're looking at neurological activity and um, action potential in your fingers. Um, they're putting a cuff on you around your waist to, to measure your diaphragmic breathing. You've got a pad on your bum to see if you're fidgeting. And um, I think it's, is it flow media dilation? pulse on your finger as well so you've got all of these things haven't you and it's like well alcohol could conceivably interfere with that particularly if you've drunk a bit too much alcohol which is what which is what people do (laughs) i remember just i'll uh end it soon but i just had one more thing was uh i struggled and this this might be why it was quite a long time he asked me to have like a lie in mind Oh, and so yeah. I could use this. And I was like, man, I can't remember the last time I lied to anyone. I just don't <laughs> lie regularly. And he was like, I think we must have been talking for about 20 minutes to try and come up with some sort of lie. And I was, <laughs> I was really what struggling. Guy what guy? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I need to start lying. I need to lie today or something. So I'm prepared for <laughs> when this comes yeah, that, and I can remember. <laughs> that's something to do. They have like a control line. Yeah. There's, there's a, a fib or whatever. It's, it's a hard question though, isn't it? Yeah. It's- it was like remembering a vivid no, lie. If you're a decent person, you're not really going to do that all that much. <laughs> I, I'm terrible at lying, so I probably just never bother with it. That's why. <laughs> um, cool, guys. I've kept you for a, a solid hour here. So, um, thanks for having us. Yeah. Is there is there anything else you kind of want to end on? Is there anything you kind of think that we've missed out about kind of the show and everything there? Um, no, I think I'd probably just want to say to people who are considering competing, we, we welcome everyone to the stage this decision to go with the WMBF and, and start this was mm-hmm. for natural bodybuilding. So, you know, um, I think we've put it up on our stories already, but this is very much an inclusive uh, decision and we welcome competitors from all um, of the different organizations. Um, and I wanted to also mention about the sort of membership and the entry and how that's all going to work that will all be up on the website as well and um, it'll be a really streamlined process everything will be in the one place and mm-hmm. um, and hopefully I think probably by the time this goes out here Steve that should be that should be up there um, so please go and check all of that out all criteria will be there um, and yeah we just really look forward to welcoming as many competitors to the WMBF UK and hopefully this is the start of something really exciting to come. Okay, and, and I'll just say, 31st of October, folks, <laughs> 2021, put it in your diaries, get yourself ready to show your muscles off to the muscle fans, because we want to see them, let's see what you've got, let's see the natural muscle, that's the date, WMBF UK, you can be super natural, and I feel like we should do some sort of Halloween fancy dress posting or something. He's, he's actually written this down. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I don't feel like there should be a prize for that. I, I don't know. <laughs> but, um, but we could leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we just thank you very much for having us on. And like, yeah, let's thanks, Steve. Discuss this. Pleasure as always. Listeners. Yeah. No, for sure. And uh, yeah, I, sh- I think I said the 12th of October. So I'm glad you said the 31st. And that makes much more sense now in my head with Halloween, because <laughs> I was like the dates. Uh, so and I just want to make sure people I know you're on social media. So mm-hmm. people want to keep up to date. I I'm, I'm imagine that's a great place uh, for yourselves individually as well, if they want to kind of interact with you guys more. I know you coach as well. So people might be interested in that and obviously the posing. So if you want to kind of rittle off your own handles and yeah, I know sure. there's going to be a few, so I'll make sure these are all linked below as well. <laughs> Okay, so Steph, you go first. Yeah, sure. So for, for all, um, really for all coaching inquiries, posing inquiries, at Steph underscore Noble Figure Pro is the personal one. Um, and Pro Prep Coaching is our coaching company for um, prep of season and, of course, posing. Um, and then the WNBF UK is just at WNBF underscore UK on the Instagram and on Facebook as well. So if you want to go and see what's happening with the show there. Yeah, Pro Prep is www proprepcoaching.com I'm at fueled by Scott's Oats pub we post lots of different things on both our socials hopefully we can inspire you all to uh, go on and, and train your muscles and uh, I just had a paper published I'm going to plug it now so check that out it's in the Journal of Human Kinetics and um, physiological no, biopsychosocial effects of natural bodybuilding competition I forget the full title so go check it out 
Steve I'll, will link it. Yeah, I'll, def- I'll link it and I'm definitely going to be checking out. I think I actually saw it pop up somewhere as well. So you reminded me. <laughs> yeah, I think that's where I must have seen it. So I need to actually, I haven't read it yet. So I need to check it out as well. That's a good reminder. I haven't read it yet? <laughs> I need to be, I'm not on my A game. So yeah, guys, thank you so much again for coming on. It's been a great chat. I'm sure we'll have more in the future. And to everyone else, thank you for listening. We'll catch you next time. Thank Thanks. you. Cheers. Bye. So I'm Steve Hall, founder of Revive Stronger and a coach of Revive Stronger. My name is Pascal Flor. I'm the co-owner of Revive Stronger and also a coach, of course. The Revive Stronger has probably been going solidly for three years, probably roughly about three years. Revive Stronger, to me, it is becoming kind of my child, my foster child. It's the gathering and getting together of like-minded people. We've been expanding the coaching team, which is helping us help more people. Uh, but each coach can only help a certain number of people. Right now, it's all over the place. We have YouTube, we have Facebook, we have Instagram, but there isn't that community aspect behind that. And so the next step for us is developing a membership site. So basically, we want to create a family and a community that is then benefiting from another. A really cool community for people within our little niche is going to be a website. They will get early access to our podcast. You can access us, ask us questions, the community aspect. We have a forum there. You can ask questions, but also you can you can lock your journey. There's also going to be courses on there, courses, presentations on different topics, discount of past seminar footage. We will log our journey as well. We'll start vlogging. We're gonna have documentaries, our entire athletic journey. Furthermore, they get access to an exercise video library. The exercises that we love for hypertrophy and maximizing hypertrophy, we're gonna go through those in depth, telling you how to execute them. We kept them concise and also mobile friendly so that you can watch them in between your sets. I'm super excited to grow this community. The amount of value that we're gonna be delivering is huge. And I'd love you to be part of it. You will get so much out of that. I'll see you inside.